Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is sitting in a gathering and he tells the gathering a man is going to enter who is a man of paradise. Everybody looks around. A middle-aged man from the Ansar, he enters the gathering with shoes in his one hand, left hand, and the water of wudu trickling from his beard down. Next day, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is sitting in a gathering. Again, he says, a man of paradise is going to enter. Everybody looks around and the same man enters. Third day, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says the same thing and the same man enters. In the gathering is sitting a companion by the name Abdullah bin Amr bin al-As radiallahu ta'ala anhu. It is written about this young companion Abdullah bin Amr bin al-As radiallahu ta'ala anhu. That among the entire companions of Prophet وسلم, among the entire Sahaba, none would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as Abdullah bin Amr bin al-As radiallahu anhu. What was his habit of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He would worship all night long and he would fast the next day. And he would finish one Qur'an every day. That was his worship. Fasting every day, praying all night long, and finishing one entire Qur'an every day. But he did not hear the glad tidings of paradise from Prophet ﷺ, in spite of that extreme worship. So when he saw this man, a middle-aged man, for three, three days Rasulullah said, this man will enter paradise. He got curious. Maybe he thought I should have gotten the glad tidings of paradise because I worship so much. I haven't seen anyone worshiping like me. So he goes to the man and he says, can I come and stay with you for three days? The hospitality was in the blood of Arabs. It still is. He said, I have an argument with my father. Is it possible I can come and stay with you for three days? He said, yes, please do. He goes and stays with him for three days and three nights. The first night, he thinks he's, he might get up and pray tahajjud all night long. But this man goes to pray Isha Salat with Jamaat in Masjid al Nabawi, comes back, goes to sleep afterwards. Goes to work in the morning, comes back in the late afternoon. Whatever Salat he could pray in Masjid, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, he prays, comes back. Three days he sees the same routine and all three nights he doesn't get up for tahajjud. Abdullah bin Amr bin al-As is keenly observing every action of his. What is it so special that he's doing that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has promised him paradise? And he starts, he's, he's in a mental dismay saying the words of Rasulullah can never be wrong. What is it that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has promised him paradise? What is it that he's doing? He gets in this confused state, but to doubt the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam can lead a person to kufr. At the end of the third day, he says to him goodbye and he says, listen, I came to, I did not have an argument with my father, I made a false pretext. But I just wanted to see what is so special that you do that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has promised paradise. Remember Abdullah bin Amr bin As radiallahu ta'ala anhu, this young companion from the Quraysh, the son of Amr bin al-As, the liberator of Egypt. When he got married, his wife was waiting for him on the night of marriage. He said, allow me to pray two rakat salat. The wife said, that's a good thing. I will join you in this two rakat salat too. She did wadu, came stood next to him all night long he would pray salat till the fajr time the next morning his father comes and asks his daughter-in-law how, how is my son she says ni'ma rajul your son is a good man yaqumul layl wa yasumun nahar yasumun nahar wa yaqumul layl he prays all night long and fasts all day long in other words, he doesn't fulfill my rights. 
the father Amr bin al-As radiyallahu ta'ala becomes upset and he goes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and says, Oh Prophet of Allah, what is this with my son? The wife is saying this is not fulfilling the rights of his wife. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam says, Call him. He comes and Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam says, Oh Abdullah bin Amr bin al-As, walizawjika alayka al-haq, walinafsika alayka al-haq, Oh, Amr bin Alas, your wife has a right over you. Your body has a right over you. This has a right over you. That has a right over you. What is it that you're doing, worshipping so much? Oh, Prophet of Allah, Allah has given me so much strength. Oh, Prophet of Allah, allow me to worship. Prophet says, no, you're not going to finish one Quran every day. You're going to finish one Quran once a week. He said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, please, I can't do that. I love me, O oh, Prophet of Allah. I love reciting Quran, O oh, Prophet of Allah. Prophet says, okay, you cannot finish Quran, more than one Quran in three days. And as for your fasting every day, you cannot fast every day. Fast three days of the month. He says, O oh, Prophet of Allah, I cannot do that. Then Prophet says, fast Mondays and Thursdays and, th and the three days in the, at, the, at the middle of the month. That was Abdullah bin Amr bin al-As radiyallahu ta'ala anhumah. And he tells this middle-aged Ansari Sahabi, what is it that Rasulullah has promised you paradise which I did not get the glad tidings myself? The middle-aged Ansari Sahabi says, I do not know why the Prophet of Allah is promising me paradise. Abdullah bin Amr bin al-As radiallahu ta'ala not able to solve this puzzle and riddle but still believing in the words of Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam in dismay is walking away to the exit door then the young then the Ansari sahabi calls listen come there is one thing I do every night every night before I go to sleep I forgive everyone I keep my heart clean and number two, I do not have jealousy against any fellow human being to whom Allah has blessed more bounties than myself. At that time, Abdullah bin Amr bin al-As radiallahu ta'ala says, Subhanallah, this is exactly why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has promised paradise for you. And this is something which is hard for me and my fellow human beings to do. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala who says, a man with much worship and not good character, there is no stoppage of him from being made to enter hellfire. On the same token, he says, a man of not much worship, a man of not much worship, but of good character, good akhlaq, good manners, good conduct, Nothing can stop him from entering paradise.